Hi, I'm Christy Valentine. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Cardiometabolic Health Conference, and I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Bob Rosenson, today, and he's going to give you uh, some of the key points out of his presentation, some really exciting things going on in the area of uh, familial hypercholesterolemia and severe lipid disorders. Well, thanks, Christy. I serve as uh, the System Director for Metabolism and Lipids for the Mount Sinai Health System, where I'm also Professor of Medicine at Mount Sinai Heart at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. You know, Christy, we had the opportunity to study evanogumab, a fully human monoclonal antibody directed against angiopoietin-like 3. We evaluated this therapy in patients with both homozygous and refractory hypercholesterolemia, in large part people with heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia who had high LDL cholesterol levels on maximum tolerated statins, azetamibe, and PCSK9 inhibitors, high-risk population. What is angiopoietin-like 3 and what role does it play in lipid metabolism? Well, this protein inhibits lipoprotein lipase and endothelial lipase. And so if you block the action of angiopoietin-like 3, the lipoprotein lipase activity increases and you get a triglyceride-lowering effect. What was less clear and applicable for this topic is the role of endothelial lipase. And it turns out that this is an evolving area, but within the liver, angiopoietin-like 3 can remodel the nascent VLDL particles resulting in smaller particles. So when you have more activity, you get a smaller VLDL particle that can, gets converted to a larger sized LDL particle, which is cleared by receptors more avidly. In addition to the decrease in uh, production and increased uh, you know, clearance, this therapy appears to have some anti-inflammatory effects, at least in experimental models, that requires further evaluation in human studies. So Bob, this was something that uh, was really impressive because we, we've always thought LDL receptor, LDL receptor, you know, I trained at Southwestern, uh, Brown and Goldstein, the Nobel Prize in this area, but you took some patients who were null, no, they didn't have any LDL receptors, and yet you found efficacy, right? Yes. So in the uh, LIPS HOFH study, you know, we randomly assigned patients with homozygous FH uh, versus uh, to evanocumab, two to one, versus matching placebo. And within that group, there were individuals with null-null activity who had LDL receptor uh, function less than 2%. And these are the highest risk individuals, highest risk for cardiovascular disease, and the most difficult to treat. And we found that evanocumab was equally effective in lowering LDL cholesterol in individuals with null-null mutations as well as non-null, non-null uh, FH uh, mutations. So this is taking me back to that. So what you've shown, and you were describing this, is that ANHPTL3 inhibition is something that we really hadn't even thought of before uh, in terms of rather than removing the LDL, I think you said you're having reduced production of LDL, and you're also removing these triglycerides. Uh, is that going through the remnant receptor for VLDL? Or, but you're having enhanced removal of the triglyceride particles and less production of LDL. So you, it's another way to reduce LDL 50% in these people. Yes. So the mechanism whereby these um, LDL particles is cleared un, is, is really uncertain. You know, there are other receptors that clear, uh, you know, the LDL uh, particles, you know, including... Uh, you know, the APOE or VLDL receptor, LRP1, so other pathways. But, you know, we had efficacy in individuals with uh, no LDLR activity, and it was the same, again, in individuals who had some residual LDLR activity. And this is what makes it so exciting, because all the other therapies that we use for homozygous FH um, work through LDLR. And the effectiveness of those therapies, be it statin, PCSK9, it's half of what it is in patients with heterozygous FH or non-FH mutations. In this study, we demonstrated equal efficacy for lowering LDL cholesterol. Yeah, I, I was both surprised and impressed. Uh, we see a lot of failures in the fields, uh, and here was one where, uh, 
you know, a, a, a fully human monoclonal. I thought, well, that's interesting. Let's see what happens. But sure enough, and now we have an approved agent. Uh, now, and you mentioned also a bit about, uh, in terms of that, what are the indications and then uh, the issue of how is it administered and how do, how do patients get this? If you have a patient uh, with homozygous FH, uh, can you give us any more information on that? Yes. So Evanocumab is approved for homozygous FH, not you know, heterozygous FH or refractory hypercholesterolemia. And so one has to fulfill the criteria that we use in the clinical trial, which may be two uh, mutations of the same or two different mutations in LDR regulating uh, genes or family history of heterozygous FH in both parents or an untreated cholesterol level greater than 500 milligram per deciliter and cutaneous anthomas prior to the age of 10 years. So there could be a clinical definition. Yes, and all qualify, all criteria make that individual eligible for evanocumab. This is a therapy that's administered intravenously at a dosage of 15 milligram per kilogram IV every four weeks. And uh, the therapy was very well tolerated. This is also a key issue with uh, fully human monoclonal antibodies. Uh, there was only one adverse event leading to treatment discontinuation, and that was a mild allergic response in one of the uh, individuals. Well, it, it's really, uh, um, you know, terrific news uh, about this, and congratulations on your work. Uh, you showed it worked in people who genetically confirmed, people who were uh, clinically resistant uh, for this, uh, and then we now can, can uh, use this therapy. It is an infusion, as you mentioned, uh, for it, and I guess you can either do it uh, in your center, uh, if you have an infusion center, at, but there's also other ways you can get this therapy for patients, correct? Yes, there's actually, um, you know, home infusions that are available. You know, they have uh, nurses uh, that go out to the uh, patient's home and uh, put in the IV, infuse, and after an hour, it's all over, 50% reduction. And uh, this is, I think, one of the great things about this uh, therapy is you bring it right to the patient's bed. You know, so Bob, I think you've, uh, we've been in this field for a while together and you've been involved with, in terms of these difficult to treat patients, the use of statins, azetamide, PCSK9 inhibitors. Uh, we also have lomidopide as an agent available. Uh, and now we have another one, even when you have tried everything else where you can get this further reduction. Uh, any last words for our audience? Well, Evanocumab works on a target that's been established by Mendelian randomizations. There's unlikely to ever be an outcome study because homozygous FH is so rare, but it gives you confidence that you're targeting a therapy associated with lower rates of ischemic heart disease and myocardial infarction. The point is that many of these patients need a multitude of medications. They have such high rates of cardiovascular disease, aortic valve stenosis, and so one has to use a multi-pronged approach. And at least we have something that works well, and particularly for those individuals with no LDLR activity, there's uh, a treatment uh, option that lowers LDL cholesterol by about 50%. Well, thank you, Bob. And once again, uh, one of the great things about uh, CMHC is a chance not only to hear the latest, but also a chance to actually uh, meet the experts, ask your questions. And I know every time, uh, every time I co-chair something, uh, I find it very enjoyable to, to learn more from my colleagues and also uh, from our participants uh, where they bring up a lot of the issues that come up in their practice. So thanks, Bob. Thank you.